first about Zoo Look, the yes. new album. Yeah. Did that take much longer to make than the previous albums? Yes, much. Uh, I would say much longer. It's the 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 work on uh, what I worked the, the longest actually. I, and I don't know if it's just because of that particular LP or if it's because I think uh, more, I'm, I think uh, since the first, each time it's longer. Mm. Uh, and also uh, because, so for Zulu, because of the concept first and, and uh, because also of, of the technical uh, reasons in seconds, yes. so we can speak yes. about both if you yes. want. Yes, you seem to have uh, played a lot of the music on Zulok using the Fairlight, which was used to some extent on magnetic fields. Did you, after magnetic fields, spend a, a long time learning new techniques with the Fairlight? <coughs> uh, you see, I, I, I worked on um, I worked on magnetic fields in uh, 1980 because it has been released in 81 and it was just uh, actually the beginning of the Fairlight and um, I actually got the Fairlight, I was probably one of the first Europeans to get that. I received it at the same time as Peter Gabriel received yes, his. Yeah, yeah. It was late 79, beginning of, eight, of 1980. So I used uh, the Fairlight quite uh, as a new instrument. But I'm always quite uh, cautious about uh, using a new instruments at once because uh, you see there is a talking about uh, electronic instruments. There is, in my opinion, a sort of uh, uh, exaggeration because of the in musical industry uh, of um, trying to convince people that uh, all synthesizers are more or less the same but at the same time they are entirely different than the previous one so you have to buy the new one and actually uh, each instrument and particularly uh, instruments like the Fairlight or the Synclavier are even much more complex than a piano or than a regular guitar and when you think about the amount of time you need to play uh, to learn hmm. how to learn piano or how to learn yes. to learn how yeah. to play uh, to play guitar, uh, it's uh, it's a joke to think that uh, you can play Fairlight in two months' time. So uh, it's the reason why also I'm I'm using more the Fairlight than other digital instruments like the Synclavier that I like yes, also yeah. because it's uh, it took me quite a lot of time to uh, control the Fairlight in Thailand to to know exactly the instrument and to know how to, to cope with the mistakes of the instrument. That is another thing. Yes. How long had you been using the Fairlight when you took it to China? And how did you find that it worked in a live situation? Well, I, I, uh, I was uh, working uh, with the Fairlight since, uh, I mean, on and off, a uh, year and a half. So it was, um, it was quite... Uh, quite familiar yes. instrument already but the you see what i like with this this sort of instrument is the fact that you can you can actually use a part of it on stage i use the fairlight for my own use and for somebody else he would he would use the fairlight in a different way for its for his own I use see. and uh, uh, for for me at that time what was the most important was the, an instrument able to memorize so many sounds and also so many so many uh, uh, instrumentations. I mean, and and also a bank of sequences and all these things. Oh, for me, yes. that was the most important. For other people, more linked with uh, uh, I don't know to try to imitate just strings or things like that can be another use. Yes. You see, uh, but uh, um, what was very important for me at that time with the Fairlight was. I, um, it's at that time that the Zulu project uh, uh, began to uh, uh, to be in my mind because the, at that time the director of the French Opera House asked me to to uh, to, uh, to think about uh, to try to do a sort of modern opera, a sort of rock opera, but with invo uh, that could involve the technology, the, the, the new technology and the new electronic instruments. Mm. And I've been always cautious about uh, opera because, in my opinion, opera is much more sort of uh, 
sort of an art form from the 19th century than maybe the, the new opera makers are people like uh, Kubrick or, 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 or Spielberg or Lucas more than musicians. Yes. But also in, in a way I, I've been quite uh, intrigued and interested by trying to think what I like in the opera as an art form is the fact that uh, the opera is uh, an opera maker is doing is working on the vocals in a total different way than you are working on vocals for a regular rock song for instance and uh, I, I th it came to my mind that it would be great to, to mix uh, I mean to try to use vocals uh, but treated yes. by a new technology and uh, so uh, I, uh, I started to, to, to work on that and I traveled uh, quite a lot in these last two or three years and each time I tried to, to pick some uh, languages uh, of a lot of different countries also because uh, um, I've always been very involved in uh, ethnic music but I've been a bit... Uh, I, not, uh, um, I think the, the way a lot of people I uh, have treated recently ethnic music and African music was a bit artificial in my opinion because yes. they took, uh, uh, <coughs> I mean, local bands and they put almost like a collage uh, the uh, uh, rock band with guitars and, and rock songs. Yes. Uh, sometimes it works like uh, like uh, for the Brian Eno stuff, for instance, because mm -hmm. it was really the collage that that was a sort of musical statement and so the first time it worked it worked but for me that was very much more interesting for me was to not making particular statement about the fact that you are going to record in africa or in uh, in china or all that but actually taking some sounds and and having exactly the same attitude vis-à-vis -vis all this sound that you are you you are when when in the old days you were in front of a MOOC 55 or yes. in front of a, yes. uh, synthesizers, yeah. but in and replace actually the oscillators, the bank of oscillators by by a bank of actors or, or people, yes. and and uh, treating them, transforming them through the fair light, through the emulator, through different devices, I through see. the AMS too, and and. Uh, 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 to try to uh, really establish sort of orchestration arrangements just with voices and my only uh, criterion of selection was just uh, uh, bits of pieces of word that could have a, a musical uh, phonetic quality. Yes. I didn't yeah, care yeah. about the meaning or the content of uh, yes. the spoken languages. How many of the uh, vocal samples were um, an ethnic recording from somewhere you've been to and how many of them were supplied by Laurie Anderson or one of the other people you... Uh, <coughs> I mean, uh, Laurie actually, we we, with Laurie, we, we, we worked on one specific song called Diva, the second, the second yes. song on, on the side one. And uh, actually, she's the only one, the, the only person who uh, did some uh, vocals I intentionally. See. Yes. The rest of it has been, I've been like a thief, actually, vis-à-vis mm. uh, -vis all the other languages. So, I mean, apart from her, everything has been uh, recorded or uh, by myself or by somebody else, an ethnologist studying different races I, I know and who had some tapes I could use and, and uh, all that. And uh, so I would say everything except uh, on Diva, ah. the, the lorry stuff. But when I'm saying, uh, when you are talking about ethnic, for me ethnic voices was not all only uh, uh, voices far away from from uh, from our culture because yes, yes. I were I I recorded also some people around me the the neighbor yes uh, because I have, I've got a Irish neighbor in in Paris with an incredible voice so I recorded I, I asked him one day to come into the studio yes. and to 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 read a sort of uh, uh, Rupert Bear a kid's story and he, he read that and, and I just took some bits and pieces of uh, some some words uh, of, of his of his um, uh, I mean of, of his voice and also I, I, I picked some things on television yes in England in United States in France uh, talk shows yeah. to have uh, a different to have the quality of the television I mm. mean on a technical yeah. point of view yes. to get this yeah. sort of midish yes. mid mid frequency yeah. sort of thing so like that it's, uh, because the nightmare if I spend so much so much time on a technical point of view on, on that is because for two reasons the first one dealing with voices like I've done is a real nightmare actually because when you are a voice is so rich 
that it's uh, it's fantastic to work on such uh, material, such a stuff. But also, it's very uh, difficult because if you are changing uh, the EQ a little bit, you change the, the timber, yes. you change the color, yeah. and uh, uh, and obviously for the fair light, for instance, because the fair light, as you know. It's difficult to get high frequencies, and yes. I really w worked very hard to get them. And when, when actually David Lord uh, mixed the 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 LP, and he used to to work with the Fairlight with Peter Gabriel and and uh, other people like that, he was amazed by the how how um, uh, treble, how rich. Uh, in high frequencies, yes. the sound of Fairlight I've got on 24 tracks wa mm. was, mm. and he asked me how I worked on, on that before. Yeah. And actually, I, I spent a lot of time to to sample all the the sounds we are talking about, um, using a lot of tricks: compress, compression, exp uh, I mean, uh, com compressor, expander, uh, and also uh, I, I used a lot of tricks to to exaggerate high frequencies at I the see. beginning uh, yeah. when I was sampling to mm. get the right yes. the right thing after, and uh, I have a lot of Fairlight sound with 15k or 16k, what is absolutely um, impossible on on a regular instrument. Yes, and also I worked. I asked I asked Fairlight. I asked Fairlight a different. Uh, Transform transformation. Mm. Uh, I had a sort of modified 2x version quite yes. uh, quite early with the 16k output cards yes. on it. Yeah, that's oh, right. I see. Um, so apart from the Fairlight, I can spot a few uh, things on the album, which are obviously the old DMS AKS synthesizers. Mm -hmm. um, and you say you used an emulator as well. Yeah. What else was uh, used on the album? I've actually, I, I worked uh, on with a lot of different instruments, but uh, uh, I used uh, on for the pure sampling thing. I used uh, I used the Fairlight. I used the emulator, the, the first one, not mm. the MU2, because when it uh, yes, been it released, it, it was uh, my my recording was was finished. It's always like that. <laughs> and I, I think it's a good instrument. It's I think it's not as good as uh, emulator said said it I see. Uh, at the beginning because they said it will be uh, 16 bits instruments and that's not true yes, yes. they said uh, it will be it will have the, co the quality of the compact disc and uh, that's, that's obviously right. uh, not true but uh, but it's very interesting I still consider the Fairlight in the in the modified version yes. better than the emulator yes in my opinion I don't know what you think but uh, I, th I think so yes I, I, yeah. but but anyway for the price it's very interesting Absolutely. because I've got at that time I've got uh, the Fairlight almost for the price of the emulator too mm. now because it's at the beginning they were just starting and yes. had a, just uh, almost a, not a prototype but the first version and yes. then I improved it all but now to, if I had an instrument to, to buy, I would really think between the emulator and the Fairlight because of the difference of price. Yes. And is the reason why the EMU is, is quite a I see. good thing. And uh, uh, what we use... Sorry, I didn't, I didn't answer to the your other, question. Yes, the other polyphonic sorry. synthesizers. Um, so for the sampling, I used uh, mainly Fairlight, emulator, AMS, the lock-in, and uh, various tricks uh, of... Uh, uh, a sampling unit we we designed uh, in France. Uh, a friend of mine. When I say we, I had the idea and and he had the technique and the knowledge. Mm, mm. But uh, uh, and uh, apart from that, I used a lot of um, different uh, um, rhythm machine like the Lindrum One and Two. Yeah. And. Uh, uh, also a lot of different uh, uh, analog synthesizers like the ARP 2600, the old Moog 55, nice. the AKS, uh, the OBX, uh, the Prophet 5, uh, a bit of DX7, but I'm not particularly a fan of, of it. I think it's too too complicated. To it's a good instrument when for stage and yes. for regular instrument, but for searching sounds, yes. I think it's uh, it's not flexible enough. I thought I heard the tubular bell sound from the DX. That's right. Using that? yes. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <coughs> and actually, it was the DX9. It was not the DX7. Ah, I see. Yeah, the, the smaller one. And uh, I think I, I probably prefer the DX9 because you can work uh, quick, quicker because it's simpler. simpler. And uh, you see, and, and also because um, 
I've been uh, through a lot of uh, all different instruments all the time and I think, as I told you, I think there is a trap with the musical industry to try to, to, to make things that, um, you see, after every two months you have a brand new instrument. Yes, and uh, yeah. um, I think also not in terms of uh, time for practicing but also in terms of uh, sounds themselves. Uh, from experience, uh, the feeling that sometimes uh, instruments of the first generations are sometimes the best. And when you have the second generation, yes. uh, it's not as good. You have other <laughs> developments, but, but uh, now they have a name, and so the components are not as good. Uh, the, you see, it's like for violinist with Stradivarius. Mm. Uh, he, why violinist is uh, still desperate, desperate to get a Stradivarius made three centuries ago? Uh, it's the same with uh, synthesizers. I think now we are living exactly the same thing. I think each instrument is different. Uh, each, even in the same generation of instrument, from one mini moog to another mini moog, we'll have different sound. Yes. And yeah. a lot of people have the tendency to consider that all instru instruments, because they are electronic, they're all the same. The and same. That's entirely uh, untrue. And. Uh, 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 I, ironically, the, the, f the last purchase I've got uh, last year was an old Moog 55. Oh, yes. Uh, specially designed by, by Moog. It was owned by, Moog, by Robert see. Moog, actually. And very in interesting because you have uh, more balanced uh, yes. power supply and uh, uh, the, the oscillators are, are, are less oh, moving yes. uh, uh, in terms of pitch. And uh, I'm, you see, I'm. Uh, see, the, uh, synthesizers with discrete components have a special sounds, uh, a wider sound, yes. and uh, that you never can have with j the, Jap the new Japanese no. synthesizer. They are too precise, and and they are, you see what gives a, a, a wide sound in, uh, in with uh, with analog synthesizer is uh, the imperfections of the instrument. The, the fact that the oscillators are moving slightly yes. gives you the, this sort of yeah. wide sound. I mean, if you want a sort of brass sort of sound, you can't, uh, you can't compete. A DX7 can't compete vis-à-vis yeah. -vis yeah. a Moog, a big Moog yeah. or a uh, ARP 2600. Yeah. No I, doubt think, about that. I think the uh, Mini Moog was the perfect example of that. Are you using a Mini Moog at all? Actually, it's funny because I never used the Mini Moog so, so much because I started uh, uh, on a synthesizer with the AMS and I was a freak with the VCS3 and, and that was something different. Yes. And also the, the, the ARP. Yeah. Uh, and uh, at that time, it was also a question of uh, of money. I couldn't have uh, everything, uh, and uh, I was so happy with the VCS3. I think it's a brilliant machine, uh, full see. of mistakes and imperfections yes. again. But you can have sounds that you can't because of the matrix board. Mm. I think the matrix is, is brilliant. That should be used much more. Yes, P designers of modern instruments should think about the matrix much more than they are, because you see all these things that, for example, when you are calling parameters just with one knob or with one one uh, soft touch that's that, that's uh, that's a, a wrong idea because it's not uh, if you have 10 fingers it's good to have more knobs and more things oh, yes. because you can you see on on the on on the, the matrix board when you are putting a pin you can you can put at the same time a lot of thing on the same control yes uh, instead of having that then the that choice, then yeah, that yeah. then that then that and if you want to correct that you have to destroy the whole thing yeah uh, with a matrix if you want to to correct that you put the the you switch off and you replace by something else but you don't change your whole patch no and that's very clever are you still having a lot of uh, modifications made to your equipment? Was it Michael Geiss who was? Uh, yes, uh, and uh, he he used to 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 do a lot of things. I'm still using this the matrix sequencer he built a few years ago for me. I think it's for I'm used to it, and it's the for me the, the it's huge matrix. Yes, it's and it's a very uh, it's a very good instrument that's very flexible, and he modified it for for. 
uh, having different interface, we are going to do the MIDI interface on it. I see. But uh, we put also an interface for the Dr. Click and to to be in sync with Lindrums and yes. the Fairlight yeah. and all that. I've got also I've got a lot. I spend a lot of time to. It's always the same thing when you when you are thinking about things before the industry is thinking of. You are spending a lot of time to solve things, and three months later you yes. have the right thing. Yes. And for for sync to, for putting in sync the Fairlight, uh, uh, these sequencers and different things. A year ago it it was quite difficult. I used uh, used to use the Doctor Click yeah. for that. And it's it's okay, but it's rather complex. And now with the SRC. Yeah. The SRC is really brilliant. I think uh, I love it. But uh, unfortunately, it was too late because I had yes. always all my codes on on tapes already. So it was useless to use the SRC at that time. Ah, I see. Um, so, what are the uh, latest developments? Uh, have you made many modifications to the Fairlight? Are you using MIDI a lot in uh, in your studio? Uh, I'm going to now, but uh, it's the same. Well, the MIDI interface um, has been developed while I was recording, so I, I I don't want to change when I'm in the middle of something. It could be a nightmare. Yes. And also because a lot of instruments I was I was working at that moment was not able to be modified uh, quick quickly yes. enough for that. Uh, what I've done is I I really try to um, to work a lot on modifications for the Fairlight. And actually, I'm, I'm uh, in, in, in different setups than a lot of other people. I have the new 2x version, but with the old cards. Mm. Because I, I, having checked everything carefully, I, I don't like the sound of the new cards. I see. And uh, I kept, I kept uh, uh, the. I, I mean, the new cards are brighter, but th they are not as wide in terms of, of sounds. And and because I've, I have recorded a lot of sounds with. The, the old cards, they don't sound the same with the new one. Yes. So I'm, I'm using the old ones and they have been slightly modified. Ah. And uh, um, and for me that was quite also, uh, uh, I, I really made a, a, a big effort for, for Zulu to, to have uh, the same dynamic and the same clarity and the same depth than uh, in, uh, when you're using acoustic instruments because as you know obviously the, any synthesizer sounds are not as rich in harmonics as uh, an acoustic sound for instance but I tried to replace that by a lot of different uh, tricks using live uh, uh, live feedback or live re regeneration a lot of the synthesizer sound I'm using are actually re regenerated or, or um, uh, I I mean, I'm using live ambience. Yes. I'm u using uh, uh, the the lavatories, the toilets of the of the studio a lot because mm, mm. it's uh, all in. Uh, it's I very bright and yes. short. Yeah. So I can have a sort of very short delay, but uh, uh, particularly uh, an, an acoustic ambience. Mm. So it gave me a lot of high frequencies. I see. Then I, I then I uh, I delay to get the because when when you are uh, putting that. Uh, sort of thing. You have high frequencies, but you have a delay. So uh, I use the delay back to to uh, put my uh, delay in sync. Just using oh, see, just yes. using the high frequencies yes. uh, uh, gained by by the live microphone, hmm. but uh, avoiding any sort of delay. So that's quite. These sort of things takes quite a long time. Yes. Have you uh, looked at the synclavier at all? Yes, a, l a little bit. Uh, but not uh, not in depth, because I, I, again it takes it takes time. And uh, for me, at the at the time I was, I know it's it's changing now. But uh, for me, the main the main difference that uh, you couldn't uh, make polyphonic with uh, polyphonic effects or uh, at the, at that time yes. with the sync clavier. And uh, I like the <coughs> the the Fairlight is uh, for me is like could be like the the AKS for the analog. I would, I would uh, compare them. Uh, it's I think the Fairlight is to digital what the VC3 or the AKS is to to uh, um, to analog synthesizer because it's full of mistakes, full of imperfections, but it's very flexible. It's very versatile instrument. 
uh, it's rather simple to use, rather quick to use, and if you learn uh, how to to uh, all the tricks, you can do a lot of things. The synclavier try to, in my opinion, to make maybe too many things, I see. and uh, the sound is good, but um, it's so more complex that at the end you don't do as much as you yes. can. You, you do. Uh, you can theoretically, theoretically, you can do. A, lot more with the sync clavier but practically you do much more with the fairlight because mm -hmm. there is not a, it's not only a question of uh, of possibilities and it's uh, uh, that an instrument is interesting the interest is to be able to do that in a fair amount of time yes not just financially speaking because when you are working at home you don't care but but uh, when you have an idea if it takes you half an hour to to go to your idea you are losing your idea, yes. so it's too complex. But I mean, uh, the main reason, apart from that, I respect the the sync clavier very much. But I think it's uh, it's uh, you can't you can't uh, do everything. No. It takes a lot. We talked about that with uh, Laurie Anderson, for instance, because she's using sync clavier and, and she has a different approach of synthesizer because she doesn't know a lot on synthesizers and she. When she wants to use the sync clavier, she takes the manual yes. and she says, OK, page 58, I want that. So she reads the paragraph and she, she, did, she does it. I, I respect that. That's, that's another approach. But I'm working in, di in a different way. <laughs> and uh, see, that's, that's something else. And, and uh, if, I, if I need a sync clavier, I can always rent a sync yes. clavier for the mm. particular use. You mentioned the uh, AKS synthesizers. I think a lot of people would uh, be interested to know about the very early pieces that you did before Oxygen, mm -hmm. uh, maybe with a, just a couple of AKS synthesizers. Yeah. Was there a piece called The Cage? Yes, you are, you are very informed. Because th this, uh, that's very funny you are mentioning that, because you are probably the first people in England mentioning this uh, Well, I this know thing. little about it, but was it for um, a stage? Yeah. Uh, yes, it was. I was still at the Music Research Center at that time, working with people like Pierre Schaeffer and also people uh, like the Stockhausen and, and John Cage sort of style. Mm. And uh, and uh, I uh, I made a record. It was a single actually. I see. Uh, it was a long long version for a ballet for yes. a ballet for yeah. television. Uh, and uh, I made a single of that, and uh, I think we sold probably uh, 54 singles or something <laughs> like that. Mm. And it's very funny because I'm searching, the, I'm looking for this single because I had one copy that I, I lost, I and the record company has destroyed everything, and I've not this single anymore. And I really would like to have it. I see. So if, if one day somebody... Uh, <laughs> well, I was uh, hoping that you could uh, tell me where to get one, but was it at all in the style of Oxygen, or was it a long time before? Oh, it was a long time, uh, it was a long time before. It was in 69. Mm. It was, uh, I see. Yeah, I was uh, really uh, So kid. was it a sort of uh, tape collage music? It was, uh, it was all, all made with sequences. Yes. I actually looked... Because at that time you had no sequences, you had just repetition of. Uh, you see, it was it was uh, uh, made. It has been made on a big bank of oscillators. Mm. You ha ha at the music research center, they had 48 yes. oscillators, but it was not a, a synthesizer at all. You had no envelope. You had nothing. Oh, so the idea was to, and you have just a little matrix ball, and you could you could have. Uh, I used the LFO techniques to to uh, to uh, actually. Having, having rhythm, I see. and I, I set different speed of different LFOs, uh, uh, driving different oscillators. So I had a sort of sequence, and I tuned the different oscillator, and it 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 makes probably one of the first uh, sequencer ah, of see. music. Yes. And and then I ask, um, so I'm I but I recorded that live. So, uh, because I had to change all the time the speed of the LFOs, mm. the tune mm. of things. So it was li uh, a pure live thing, but entirely in studio. And then uh, I asked a drummer to come, and um, uh, we did two versions of that. One was uh, totally uh, live. I mean, I was playing live, and he was playing live. And then when I, I had the sort of frame in, in mind, I did the whole thing on tape, and I asked the drummer to play. 
uh, particularly yeah. the, the whole thing. It was an eight minutes piece, something like that. And uh, uh, so at that time, it was even before uh, I was starting to use, because the, the first AKS I've got was uh, in 66. So that was very, mm. you know, I think one of the first one I was, uh, and uh, it, it was, um, uh, I was really, uh, uh, a child at that time almost and it was, it was very 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 in uh, exciting to have uh, all in one box to yes. have uh, everything that was very new at that time and the the uh, then I, I I worked with actually two uh, AKS one VCS 3 and one AKS and I did actually all the uh, music for the French Opera House uh, ballet. What I've done um, uh, for the I, I've actually the first official thing I've I've been asked on stage. Mm. I've been at the Opera House. What that was quite an irony because most of the time it's at the end of your life that we are asking to they are asking to musicians these sort of things. But but just by pure luck, I I did that and I enjoyed it obviously very much. I see. And I did all the music with two. Yes. One AKS and one VCS3 and uh, uh, different effects, and I did that on four revoxes, uh, manually sync, mm. and uh, so it was eight tracks, all mixed, all mixed on the fifth one. And I remember that I, I even uh, my pat my uh, patch board patch bay was built in an old shoe box. Ah. <laughs> it worked. It worked quite well. I've still that. Yes. Ah, I see. So, um, after that time, when you had uh, put out Oxygen, which eventually yes. became a, a, an immediate uh, yeah. success for you as a, a first album, Yes. Um, why do you feel that that album was such a commercial success compared to other people working at the time, like Klaus Schultz or Tangerine Blue? Uh, <coughs> first of all, I, I, at the beginning, it was not considered by anybody like a particular commercial thing because all record company refused to release it, saying, "Oh, it's not uh, sung. Uh, there is no drums. Uh, it, it couldn't work, and all that." So uh, that's just to say that nothing is uh, never. Uh, it's very difficult to make any comment before something. Mm. And actually, I'm, I'm more or less feeling the same situation with Zuluk. For me, it's, uh, it's uh, sort of, uh, we talk about that, if, uh, but, but the, the uh, for me, oxygen vis-à-vis -vis the analog sounds, for me, it's, uh, Zuluk is the same on a vis-à-vis yes. -vis the digital. Yes. I mean, uh, I have the feeling, it's not pretentious at all, but I have the feeling with that particular LP that I, I, I explore uh, some areas vis-à-vis -vis the digital instruments that have been not uh, particularly explored la at that extent yeah. until now. And uh, uh, it's the reason why, tr it's answer for answering to your question, because I think what Oxygen had, maybe at, at a distance, what I can say about it, is the fact that uh, I, I um, didn't consider the machines uh, as machines, as so many uh, German groups were uh, is very into the German mind in a way to say this is the machines and they can make music and, and all that uh, themselves and Tangerine Dream leaving the stage and all these things and uh, uh, I considered uh, always, I always considered uh, sy synthesizers and electronic instruments like ordinary instruments and uh, and uh, I didn't. I didn't. Uh, I never m wanted to make specifically uh, specific statement about the fact that electronic music is better or is worse or is. But it, it's just uh, the instruments of our generation. Yes. That's all. So the music I wanted to to create, I created with that. But I could have created in a, in another context with a classical orchestra or with a rock yes. band. Yes. Yes. And uh, I think it's this attitude that made Oxygen uh, received by the audience in a different way, because the, actually the, the, the attitude of a lot of German groups at that time was far more intellectual in a way, vis-à-vis -vis the instruments, vis-à-vis -vis the technology. Wanted to make any state, uh, making quite heavy statement about that and saying, uh, 
and also uh, the fact that <coughs> they were because they were uh, waiting maybe uh, from the machine the music uh, they didn't on a technical point of view they uh, it was very linear yes and it's always what what um, annoyed me a little bit in, in uh, a lot of work from the German groups. It's uh, you start by a very good mood and then nothing happens. So you have n no actually uh, uh, work of structure. I mean worked on, on a vertical side. I think it's very horizontal yes. and it's interesting from time to time. But when you have heard the first five minutes or the first four minutes, you know what's going on during yes. 20 minutes. Yes. And on, on oxygen, the main difference was it was a, a, a structure more, more like a symphony or la, la, more like songs. Yes. And it's the reason why I think a lot of people liked it and also is the reason why also a lot of underground people said, oh, it's easy it's, uh, because the, it, it reminds a lot of people some uh, classic structure. And I think it's, it was uh, interesting interesting me uh, more and more is the fact that you are ne never inventing anything I think you have uh, a structure uh, I mean the problem of, st of structure is not uh, you can expand you can in you cannot invent uh, new structures because it's li like if some s one morning you could say okay uh, one day has 24 hours but my day will have 26 hours you see in other words you have sort of in in in, in human beings in your in yourself you have sort of biologic rhythms yes. that makes you uh, for example why a movie an ideal movie is between 90 minutes and uh, 110 minutes that's the ideal thing. If a movie is doing is 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 less than one hour, you have the feeling that it's too short. And when it's more than two hours, most of the time, it's too long. Yes. You see. And if somebody say tomorrow, no, but I want to change that, and my my movie will will last seven hours, it wouldn't work. No. Because you don't know why. Because because it's it's a question of um, of. Uh, rhythm inside yes. yourself yes. and uh, for me in terms of, of structure I, I was very interested since oxygen and since ever to uh, to um, try to keep to come back also to a very simple and and uh, and uh, almost not classic but I mean uh, I mean a sort of ordinary structure but but trying to evolve and yes, trying to change yeah, in yeah, terms of yeah. uh, uh, on on the on the point of view of colors, timbers, uh, sounds, mm. uh, and, and all that. And I think the result for me is the reason why, as uh, for me, Zulu is probably the, the 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 work I'm the most satisfied on that point of view since ever since the beginning. Mm. Because for the first time, what I've got in mind is what I've got on the record. Yes. Also in terms of, of sounds, I, I spend a lot of time with the mixing. Uh, I mixed uh, during two months and a half on, on, on that. I mixed entirely the record in London and I was not satisfied because I used the SSL and I'm not so sure about the SSL. Uh, and I went back in my studio with David Lord and we remixed everything there for two reasons, because of the, of the SSL and all that, I'm, I'm not so sure, and, and uh, for, for technical reasons, and also because I've worked so long on the sound in my studio that uh, I made so many mistakes in the control room that now I worked with a guy called Jean-Pierre Lafont, who is uh, he's with a French uh, acoustician, and I think he really succeeded to make a very precise control room, and I think I've, I've, I've at the moment, one of the best uh, uh, control room in terms of stereo image, That's precision cool. of stereo image, and yeah. also I've, I'm a, I've no more face problems. Every studios in the world uh, uh, have uh, face problems between left mm. and right. Mm. When you move your head like that, the, change is, the sound is changing. It's a, it's a nightmare. And uh, in my control room, when you go from one side to the board, to the desk, to another side, the sound is exactly the oh, same. I see. And uh, so the precision I can have is is much pre uh, much much mm. better. And also, I worked a lot on uh, thinking about the compact disc because oh, I, I think for me it's the the, the next stage. And uh, I, I made a special mix for the compact disc, actually. Ah, I see. And uh, I'm, 
I, I must say that I'm, on a technical point of view, it's not a question of v judging the music, but uh, the, the, uh, on a technical point of view, I'm quite satisfied about the, the sound of the compact and uh, also the sound of, of, uh, of the record. Actually, I've, I'm going to, I'm always remixing things, yes. and uh, actually, the, the, um, I'm releasing for, for Christmas, I think, or, or just beginning of January. Uh, in a, a different version, not a different version, but a different uh, uh, cutting. Yes. I cut uh, the first one at tape one in London, and the next release in uh, 15 days, or maybe it's al already in, in the in the shops now, because there is no difference in terms of cover and all no. that. Has been cut in the United States, and uh, the uh, because of the power and because of the cycles. Hmm. The is the technical reason of uh, yes. The, the tech, sorry, the technical reasons of. Uh, well, what I was going to say about um, Zulok is that there seems to be a concept for each album, but the concept on Zulok seems stronger than any of the others, using these uh, voice sounds, human sounds, and almost animal sounds. Is do you feel that that's the case, and is that partly why you're most satisfied with Zulu? Probably yes, because the the also have have uh, have found uh, the the possibility to uh, escape from uh, any uh, any all the sounds of the uh, album or almost has been uh, created for the LP. They were not existing before, and uh, and uh, for me in terms of. Um, of composition, it's it's always when you see it's always frustrating when you are using uh, the DX7, for instance, and you you push a button and you know that this sound is you have heard this sound uh, everywhere, or uh, or you will hear listen to the, that sound everywhere in in uh, in the next in the following six months, and uh, the, also the concepts of of uh, voices gives to me a new a new field, a new area uh, to explore. Uh, because even if you take a tiny bit, a tiny piece of uh, of language, any language, of any spoken language, even if you don't understand the content, the content, because if uh, if you take a part of a word, ob obviously you don't un you're not able to understand even in your own language what it means. But it's still full and full of uh, a lot of cultural and a lot of psychological uh, ingredients and if you if you listen to an Eskimo uh, uh, word, even if it's a tiny bit, immediately gives you a sort of uh, uh, lands you have landscape in front yes. of your of your of your mm, of you uh, that no other sounds, no other synthesizer sounds can can produce. And is the reason why this uh, uh, this concept and and actually I I just worked on human sounds. Mm. Uh, for me, the 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 zoo look is a human zoo. It's not. It's yes, not. A, yes. I'm, I've n I've no you even if some sounds are uh, sounding like uh, like animals, uh, they are coming from human sources. Yes. Yes. I see. Um, so, do any of the uh, sound samples include entire words or phrases which we would be able to recognize or not? Uh, what do you mean? Well, I can't tell if there are some uh, uh, languages other than English which actually contain a, a whole sentence which somebody would understand. No, but that, that was the part of the game, if I can say so. I mean, uh, to... Uh, to uh, make African language or English language or French language the same, because actually it's like like when you when you uh, look at a when you look at a city from from uh, from a very uh, from the plain, for instance, all buildings are the same, all cars are the same, all people are the same. Mm. If you uh, look uh, at probably uh, the planet from a rocket or from another planet, I, I be, you wouldn't be able to, s to look at the difference between the forest, the, s the oceans, the, uh, the cities, the country, everything will be the same. Uh, and for me, uh, the look is like looking at our time 
in uh, 1000 years mm. uh, sort of uh, graffiti a video graffiti or an audio graffiti uh, so you you, you uh, like if if you had a, a, conversa uh, a conversation but a uh, universal conversation mm. half erased so it's just human yes. but uh, yeah. but you don't you can't when you listen to that to it you 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 can't You cannot know if it's English, if it's African. For instance, a lot of people at the beginning of Side One told me we are hearing "Love Me, Love Me," and and actually that's an African voice. It's not English at all, but yes. it sounds like English. Some other things are are English and sounds like African yes. or, or or like Chinese. And you Absolutely. see, all uh, that that was the part of, of yes. the game is yeah. the. And I think that I've I've. Uh, On my point of view, I've succeeded to do that on technical yes, point of view. Yeah. To be honest, I found listening to a lot of the album with uh, all these voice uh, samples to be quite disturbing in a sense, uh, quite far removed from conventional music with synthesizer sounds. Do you think that people will find it hard to accept this kind of music? I don't know. You see, when you are doing something, you, you never. I, I never think uh, this way. I don't think the the um, this uh, this LP is, is particularly more uh, more difficult than others. is is just different, and it's the it's exactly when when Oxygen has been released. It's the reason why I, I was making a parallel because people said exactly the same. Said, but don't you think it's a bit difficult for people because it's not the same structure? They are not used to that. And uh, uh, don't you think that people used to uh, um, songs? They are like songs, but with no lyrics. Don't you think that people will be lost and all that? I think I'm, we are exactly in the same situation because for me it's not particularly. I don't know what you see. An avant-garde for me, the music of avant-garde is Xenakis. Yes. Yeah. The avant-garde for me is synonym of boredom most of the time, and uh, because actually, and um, because it's different. Uh, you have to be to be used to, to it, but in my in my opinion, is the reason why the, it's the sort of music uh, that maybe could last more. For instance, the first time I I, I listened uh, the the Brian Eno stuff, the Life in the Bush of Ghosts, mm -hmm. for instance, that I l really like very much. The first time it was a bit disturbing, and then you you discover other things. I think it's, it's the tendency of all the show business rubbish. Uh, to to consider that uh, 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 tune has to be kept like that uh, hooked uh, yes. like one at once one time on on the radio and and you see that's um, that that that's okay because sometimes it works but also uh, sometimes uh, after uh, 15 days it's over it's what's going on with the, the music in in England uh, most of the time uh, you have groups that are Uh, living or lasting three months and then they disappear because their music are just uh, mm. uh, they are just accidents yeah and uh, for me more and more I mean involved with uh, with things that could last more not for lasting but because when you are thinking of something when you want to even having fun and uh, it's something that a year a year after you you go back to it and and uh, And and you like it more and more, and I hope that it will happen. Yes, on yes. It's very funny because the reactions with Zulu all over the world are very uh, similar than Oxygen. There are a uh, lot of people are quite excited by it. Others are a bit uh, uh, shocked because it's different. Of you know, it's always the same thing in life. If you are doing the same uh, of the previous things, people would say, "Oh, it's the same." If yes, it's different, they yes. say, "Oh, it's different." <laughs> you see what I mean? Great. Okay. Thanks. Um, you seem to have been following up the idea of uh, creating something that will last with the uh, Music for Supermarkets album, which apparently is going to stay as a unique artistic work for as long as uh, it exists. Um, was there anything unusual about the content of that album, or was it somewhere between the feel of uh, Magnetic Fields and Zoolook? Yeah, it was actually in the middle. That's right. Uh, not not because it has been uh, probably because it has been done in the middle of of those. But for for um, uh, yes, it was uh, at that time that I was on already practicing and thinking uh, of Zulu. So some bits of, of pieces of that LP are a little bit like like Zulu, and some others like 
I would say like concert in China and uh, it was really in the middle and uh, but for me it was actually the, also for another reason I'm, I think I've always loved record as objects very much I mean almost the smell of the cover or the 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 rondel or or all the informations about it for me it's uh, it's magical record and in the 60s or 70s you had actually wonderful concept in yes. the record and these days I think a record is more and more like a Kleenex box or something like that and I think that's that was quite for me a, b a bit sad and I wanted to uh, uh, to having fun with with records again so uh, I had decided trying to to uh, present this record as as an object as a, yes yeah uh, as 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 a painting as a photograph and and destroy the lacquers was was a sort of uh, joke and a symbol vis-a-vis -vis record companies to to show that uh, it can exist like a uh, like a painting can yes exist. yes and do you keep a copy of the music yourself or has it gone oh no I have I have uh, I have uh, actually uh, um, the c the cassette of the of the radio program, and I have uh, bits and pieces of the 24 tracks because it has some of, of things has been done uh, live also. Yes. So uh, I mean live in the studio. Mm. So I have part of of the music on the 24 tracks, but I have no no I particular. Yeah. I've, I've really uh, did the whole thing yes. uh, entirely because it was funny yes. just because if it has been done like that. It was actually played on Luxembourg, was it? That's right, yes. Because we were listening out for it over here and I missed it, certainly. So I imagine there would be some people who've got uh, a tape of it off that Oh, yes. Show. Yeah, oh, yes, certainly. Because also, the idea was also to... Uh, uh, then, then we did a campaign in, in France uh, with Spots and I was saying, pirate me on, on, on that night. Ah, I see. And it was also to... Uh, it, all that was a sort of very surrealistic joke yes. uh, about the old the old thing, and uh, I had a lot of trouble with all record companies. They uh, yes. said it's uh, <laughs> you shouldn't do that. It's, uh, it's awful, I, as you can imagine. Yes, uh, I see. we had a lot of uh, we had a lot of fun, and we did we uh, also it was also a sort of uh, feedback from myself from the audience for the audience to give them a sort of gift. Yes, of uh, I see. Uh, from something. And uh, what is the uh, thinking on doing some live concerts now? I saw you on television the other night saying you had plans for next year. Yes, Are I those really would like plans to fairly well developed. Yes, um, uh, it's fairly well developed, and uh, and I'm still not sure exactly when I'm going to do that because also I'm rather bored by the idea of doing a gigantic uh, tour during eight months, repeating every night the same thing. Yes, I think it's there is something a bit. Uh, uh, a bit sort of civil servant attitude, uh, uh, doing all, all every day the same thing, and I feel very privileged as artist to be able not doing, do, not I having see. this life. Yes, yeah. And I, I'm, I see also for another reason, so many groups are doing that in in a very good way, and uh, but so many groups are doing more or less the same thing on the same stage. So I would like to, to find uh, on the same stages all around the world. If you are here, you do Wembley or you do... Uh, yes. the, if you are in LA, you do Hollywood Bowl or, or something else. But it's always the same thing. And uh, a part of, of the challenge I would like to, to achieve would be to, to uh, find unusual places. I unusual see. places to, and, and for unusual concerts. So maybe not doing uh, hundreds of, of tours, but uh, concerts. But maybe one, one or two, in a few countries. Mm. Uh, if you are standing up, you can't have a, a keyboard like that because you see the hand is like that. Yes. It should be. It should be thought. Yes. Uh, on a At an anatomic angle. point of view. Yes. Uh, yeah. On, on a much, much clever way, and mm. I'm still waiting uh, for an instrument like. And probably I would like to to uh, to to may ask somebody to design. An ah, instrument. See. Yes. Because you see, when when you are when you are standing standing up and you have the keyboard like that, you you are like so it's it's okay when you are here, but when you are when you are at you see you you have you have your it's not the natural position. The, uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I think that's that's a fair fair compromise, but uh, it's like uh, uh, the Moog liberation mm. in that 
Mughal liberation was even is even better than this sort of thing because you have yes. you have a, a although that's very heavy, like isn't it? After yeah, that's yeah. right. The Yamaha is much better. The Yamaha, the DX one, I think. Yes, yeah. DX1. And um, in the live situation, would you be improvising solo parts at all? On the uh, the live Oxygen concerts, yes. uh, particularly the the single that was out on Polydor, yeah. there seemed to be some improvised uh, yes. sessions. Yes, yes, absolutely, yes. Oh yeah, I think it's it's important to have a different uh, thing on stage than than on the record. I think it's uh, it's the part of the game on stage. It's uh, it's what 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 makes things uh, mm. pleasant to. So could you see yourself, if you're doing concerts in a few months' time, actually having uh, large sections of improvised music or new music that's not on any other oh, yes. album? I think, uh, I think it's uh, more, I consider more and more the, the, the work of on, in studio and the work on stage as two, almost two different worlds. Yes. Ideally, I would like to, to have a total, uh, complete, other things on stage than than studio. It's not possible for different reasons. Yeah. But uh, but it's difficult anyway.